boom boom bon dee a doom dum dee a doom dum dee do 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 Welcome to Chennai and another inspiring and informative episode of Heavy Petting. And have we got a surprise for you today. And that's no croc. But before I get into that, do you know what I love about Chennai? It's music scene. Not just the rock and pop scene, but also the traditional music. And today, temples around Chennai celebrate their goddess Amun during Adi Masam. So in that celebrative spirit, let's see what we have in store for you. Madras Crocodile Bank, a trust set up to protect and save the crocodilian species in our country. How do they manage to do that? That's what I'm here to find out. Hi, Colin. Hi, Sina. How are you? Good good. good, good. I'm here with Colin Stevenson, who's the director of Madras Crocodile Bank Trust. That's Very correct. nice to meet you. You too. <laughs> We've never covered a place like this before. Um, first of all, tell me about you. How long have you been in the crocodile world? I've uh, been in the crocodile world for around about 20 years. Wow. Um, been in the crocodile bank for only around about two months, so I'm fairly new to this place. Okay. And why do they call it a bank? Uh, the whole the whole concept behind this when it started in around about 1976 was to set up basically a, a, a repository of the mainly the three Indian species of crocodiles so that we had a, always had a future um, population to call on if, if the worst came to worst in the world and they disappeared. Okay. So it's set up as a genetic repository or a bank for, uh, for the three Indian species of crocodiles. That was the start, the basis of it. Okay, and what exactly, I understand those three species, and how many species do you have here today? Uh, we have 14 species of crocodilian. 14. That's out of 23 living crocodilian species. Okay. So over the years, the program has expanded a little, so we've tried to get uh, as many of the crocodilian species as we can, partly, of course, for display purposes, um, for breeding. Some of them are still remain endangered, so we're trying very hard, even now, to breed some of those more endangered species. So, you know, our work continues. Where do a lot of these other uh, species that are not the three Indian ones, where do they come from? Africa, uh, Asia, you know, from Australia up to India. Okay. Um, United States, southern, southern United States okay. of Florida. Oh, the music stop. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Central and South America. Um, so all of the tropical areas uh, of the world have their own crocodilian species. And once you um, basically breed them here, what percentage of the ones that you breed here actually do they return to the wild? In the early days we were breeding uh, in the first place to breed the three Indian species right. which was the main focus at the time. Uh, a lot of those were released into the wild. Nowadays we do have a surplus particularly of one, the, the mugger. It's, um, it's, it's doing okay in the wild but unfortunately the, as with many animals the habitat's diminishing so really we're, we're un unable at this stage to release these into the wild because there's nowhere to put them. Uh, the gharials, there's still an absolute chance that we may have to uh, release some of those into the wild, so we maintain the breeding of those. But also, these days, conservation doesn't just mean taking things, breeding them, and putting them back into the wild. It's educating uh, the public about these animals. Uh, maintaining a crocodile and alligator in captivity, how... Uh, how it how what's involved? Yeah, what, what's involved? Um, you'd be surprised at how um, efficient these animals are. They're, um, we don't need to feed these guys anywhere near as regularly as, uh, as if they were mammals. Some of the crocodiles that we have here, if we were to feed a mammal of equivalent size, it would be, it would be maybe ten times the amount of food that the crocodile eats. 
But why should the layperson care about these rather otherwise dangerous looking beasts and their population in this world? We do know that when, when you remove uh, animals like crocodiles, some of the predatory fish, for example, in South America, predatory fish like piranha numbers increase. They actually feed on the fish that people are fishing for. So it actually, people will think, oh, the crocodiles, we'll get rid of them. Not only will we make some money, but they're gonna, well, there'll be more fish for us, but it actually the opposite happens. Well, thank you so much, Colin, for doing everything that you are for these wonderful species that not everybody thinks of when they think love and cuddles, <laughs> but I do. <laughs> yeah, yep, so do we, and, and it is one of the things that we regret that we can't go in and cuddle some of these guys. Yeah, yeah, because that might be the last time you do. It may well be the last one. <laughs> All the same, you respect them, and, and we need people like you. Thank you so much. No worries, it's a pleasure. <laughs> NDTV's Cricket app, Android and iPhone. Faster scorecard, special analysis, and much more. Download free. NDTV.com slash apps.